Hey, Cody. Hey, Jane. How's it going? It's going well. How are you? I'm hanging in there. It's almost the weekend. Yes. Very excited about that. You've been here before. I so, have. I think I was on episode two, mm -hmm. possibly. Quite new. So you know the whole gist. This is Cody. He's our other solution architect, and he is going to be showing us some very cool apps today about soccer, or as some people call it, football. <laughs> For yeah. friends across the pond. I yeah. was in a Slack channel the other day and I called it soccer and I wasn't aware of the backlash I was gonna get for calling it soccer. Oh, um yeah. so it's it's pretty intense. Um I was unaware of that. Not a soccer enthusiast myself, but well aware now of uh the backlash. <laughs> <laughs> for calling it soccer. For calling yeah. it soccer, yes. Yeah, I'm not a big soccer fan, but Maybe we'll learn some things today. Yes, that's always the goal. Right? It is learn soccer. Something. You're right. It's, it is soccer. Oh, man. Soccer. Yes, it's soccer. It is. Football is something we play in America. Soccer. Yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. And uh, we're talking about this because it is Euro Cup. Yes. Which is, I'm guessing, it's like the World Cup, but Euro. But just, but just Euro? Again, yes. yeah. Not... Not a soccer or football enthusiast. So I also learned the other day by, uh, I think it was Liron who corrected me. Um, there's actually for, I guess for Europe, they actually don't call it Euro Cup. Apparently it's American slang. It's just Euro 2020. Oh, they just call it Euro. Yes. Okay. Again, something else I got backlash on. It's not Euro Cup. Apparently maybe that's just kind of American slang that they throw on it. Um, same thing like FIFA World Cup. I don't know, maybe it's just called FIFA. I don't know. So, again, yeah, another is, thing I learned the hard way the other day. Is the World Cup just called World? World 2020? See, I feel like it should be called World Cup. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Euro Cup. Doesn't make sense. But that's fine. Yes. Whatever we want to call it. We all yeah. know what we're talking about. That's all that matters. Yeah. Hey, there's Joe. Hey, Joe. You're on mute. <laughs> oh, no. I did it again. Um... I, I was just curious. We see a bunch of people online. We could see where they're from and if they call it soccer or football or some other variation as well. Yeah. Um, so if you're in a variety of things, we're now on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. Um, so go ahead and let us know. I think another question came in here. Yeah, what do they in, call? In yeah, golf, so they, what do they call the Open? What do they just call the Open? And, and I think uh, across the pond, it's just referred to as the Open Championship. Are there multiple opens? I thought all tennis matches were called opens. So, yeah. No, and, uh, I have the four majors in tennis. The only one that doesn't have open in it would be uh, Wimbledon. The other ones are, I believe, the French, U.S., and Australian. Isn't Wimbledon also in the U.K.? It's in England, yeah. Okay, so they have a British open and then a Wimbledon. Interesting. As you can see, I'm a huge tennis enthusiast. <laughs> soccer we gotta vote for soccer we gotta vote for soccer oh Christoph's so, here still talking so about Christoph with a Q Ooh. Uh, talking about golf <laughs> <laughs> we should have we should have the Vizlib open yes I don't know what we do maybe this is we could rename Vizlib happy hour now this is Jane this is your thing <laughs> <laughs> we can we can combine it so what are what are people uh, having today um, we're, I don't think anybody's drinking Coca-Cola cause that's now banned, uh, yeah, in football, right? Mm -hmm. Can't have it. But I have my, uh, I have a Bizlib mug, not sponsored by Yeti, uh, cause <laughs> not a sponsor, but I just really like this mug. So I put a, a sticker on it. What do you have, Jane? I've got orange juice, the best of all juices. Big fan of pulp too. I know. Oh Controversial. yeah. You're, you're a with pulp person. I'm a with pulp person. With the pulp. more pulp, the better. You know what? Just give me all the pulp. Don't even give me it the. It just chance. pours out, and it just, just you can hear it. It's one yeah. big chunk. <laughs> <laughs> I I personally I just I just have water. I, I have my my hydro flask here. I was telling Joe earlier. Um, spoiler alert! It's not an actual flask. It's just the name of the. Just a hydro flask. Just yeah. a hydro flask. We will get some branded stuff. We are working on it. Um, uh, we have a new logo perhaps in store too, right, Jane? I don't know if yeah. you talked to Mike about it and yeah, what he was coming. thinking, but we'll get some yes. stuff. 
Yeah, it's Maybe in some the works. koozies too. That's what I really want. A koozie. Be the koozies, like for oh. summer. I still Which, love my idea of getting turtlenecks and then just having just it's only the neck part thing this like. just, <laughs> just as you say that it reminds me like I hunch at my desk and so you can't see my logo and I yeah so we gotta get we gotta get what's on our necks we don't even need the whole turtleneck just you know just like the bib part that Simon wears on Big Bang Theory maybe we'll see if it catches on. <laughs> Um, no I'm going to drop out, let you two go. So there's room on the screen to share stuff, but maybe I'll pop in from time to time. So I just wanted to say hi. And I saw some things coming in. Yeah. Cool. cool. Sounds cool. good. Thanks, okay. Joe. See you guys. See ya. Cody, I think you have an app talking about scores. Yeah. Yes. Catch me up. I have no idea. I don't know who's playing. I have no idea what's going on. Well, good. That, make, that makes two of us. So we'll start there. <laughs> All right, so let me share my screen here. Share screen. Who's the, uh, who's said, who's uh, the predicted winner? I don't, I don't know. Like you said, I don't follow it. So I know they just sounded, they just finished up the group stages. Um, so now it's into the round of 16 brackets. So the brackets were actually set, I think, late last night, slash early this morning. Um, can you see my screen? Whoa. Yes. Is it flickering? It is flickering. Why is it doing that? Oh, is it good now? Oh, it's yeah, it looks good. Looks All right, good. fair enough. Yes, so I have the, if it starts flickering again, please let me know. Because um, it's up on my other screen, so I can't see it. So you'll have to be my eyes there. Um, so yes, so we built a Euro 2020 app um, internally. Uh, we have a Euro 2020 um competition going on uh, for a prediction standpoint uh, throughout the company. Um, so we thought it'd be really cool to build an app around the uh, tournament. So I'm going to go through uh, two different sections of the app. The first uh, sheet I'm going to be going through, um, we'll be using our Vizlid write back table and our Vizlid tiles and container. Um, and then the other sheet, all we're going to through is the historical match data, and that will actually build up from scratch. Um, so I have a couple of visuals uh, that I'll throw on there, and then we can start brainstorming on uh, anything else. So without further ado, uh, I am going to go into our first sheet. So the Euro 2020 matches, this is using our Vizlib right back table and our Vizlib tiles. Um, so really the main, um, I guess the functionality main purpose of this sheet, rather, as this loads up here, um, and it's a little slow because I have a few, quite a few things open right now. Um, so the main essence behind here would be to, you know, track the scores here on the left-hand side and telling whether the, um, the match is complete or not. So as matches were completed, I would go in here and actually enter the scores for team one, team two, and mark whether the score or sorry, the match was complete or not. And you oh, can so see, you get to, okay. Go, yep. Um, so you can actually see it in real time, which is cool. Um, as you enter it in, uh, you can submit the scores and you'll see them reflected here on the right. Um, so on the left hand side, we have our, our Vizlib uh, write back table. And then on the right hand side, we have inside our containers for each match day, we have uh, the Vizlib tiles um, showing the matchup and the score and whether it was final or not. So I actually delayed throwing in scores here for match number three. Um, so if I scroll all the way down, we see match 35 and 36 are still blank here for match day three. So if I scroll down, we see yesterday's date on here, um, Germany and Hungary <clears throat> and Portugal and France. Um, they actually just finished up, so we can actually submit those scores now. Yeah, who won that game, Portugal and France? So Portugal and France, it was actually tied. It was 2-2. Two -two. You're allowed um, to tie in soccer? For the, mat for the group uh, group stages, you are. Um, because I think it's based on points and whoever has the most points coming out of group stage, um, you know, basically, you know, goes into the bracket stage. So gotcha, I don't know, okay. I don't know how the points <laughs> work. What sudden death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think in the bracket stage, it would go into overtime or I think in soccer extra time. I'm not sure what the verbiage is there. Um, but yeah, so I think for, for group play, I think they, if it's an ends in a tie, then it ends in a tie. Um, I think maybe each team gets a point or something like that. I know there's some type of point system. Anyway, back to the good stuff here. Um, so 
you know, Portugal and France actually ended in a tie. They were uh, 2-2. So if you look on the left-hand side of my screen here, really all we're doing is just entering in the score. Um, in the last column here, we can choose if the game is complete or not. Um, is it? I chose it to be a text or string input field. Um, you can have it be a drop-down too. So the other thing I could do is make a drop-down field and have my options be yes, no, or tied, or incomplete, or overtime, or something like that. Um, okay. I just chose a simple, simple text string there. Um, and so, does this mean go. that it has to be perfect? If you don't, if you type it in right. Yes. Yep. Yep. So okay. I have, uh, you know, it's either a yes or a no um, based on these tiles conditions over here. If it, mm -hmm. if I spelled yes wrong, or if I spelled it with like an undercase, or sorry, a lowercase, not uppercase. Um, a lowercase Y or something like that, or all caps, um, it wouldn't follow through into the tiles because I have a if then statement into the tiles that turns the tiles gray. Um, okay, cool. When the match is complete. Um, so we know Portugal and France tie at 2 2. And believe it or not, you guessed it, Germany and Hungary also tied. Two two. Oh, they tied? Is they Hungary also good? tied. I thought two Germany two. was like very good at soccer. I'm biased toward Germany. Um, I have a very German last name. Uh, but yes, I, I'm not sure who's good and who's not good. Uh, I, I, I just feel like Germany's like really good for some reason in a lot of things. I don't know. Again, I have no I have no expertise in the soccer realm of things. So Germany could be the worst team ever. I don't know. Um, but isn't the best player Christian Aldo on – isn't he Portugal? I want to say he's Portugal. Can we ask the audience? Can we phone a friend? Yeah. Do we, know what, do, we, do we know what team Ronaldo's on? Yes, Ronaldo. Cristiano. What's his name? Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Is okay. that? I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll wait for the audience to phone in here for our phone. Yeah. Friend. Um, so we have our scores inputted here. Uh, you see our underline. I think if you can see my screen, they're a little shaded. So if you actually do submit scores... On the right-hand side, as that loads in, we are reloading the app. And on the right-hand side, as it saves the app, we will see the tiles go gray. And since it was a tie, it actually uh, color codes the score to be red. Uh, if one of them was higher, like you said, Sweden and Poland, uh, it's, it is green. Mm -hmm. um, losers in black. And then if it's tied, it's actually just going to be red. Um, so that's what I use. So in a combination of using the right back table and visit tiles and the container, um, I was actually able to keep track of all the scores, go in here when the scores are complete and final and enter them in. Um, as the round of 16 come in, I can actually add more rows in here um, and probably create, I'm probably going to create another container for the first round of 16 and so on and so forth. Um, and who knows, maybe create another sheet for the final matchup um, when that's the side. I think there's still a couple more weeks left of the actual tournament. It does last a little bit longer. I know it's been going on for a couple weeks already though. Yeah, cool. Uh, would it be okay if you showed us quickly like how you could um, do a drop down instead of adding yeah. in text for the complete? I can try my best. Let's see if it works on the fly for us. This is a live yeah. demo. So this is subject to just crashing on me because that's <laughs> the luck sometimes you have in live demos. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So we are in the right back table. All right, let's go to columns. And we are in complete. North Macedonia. Wow. I yes, I've, 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 I've never heard of I've, I've never, never heard of them before. I thought they stopped being a country after Alexander the Great conquered them or something. <laughs> Yeah, that I'm not sure of. <laughs> All right. So, and under type, you see we have a lot of types here that we could use. Um, mm -hmm. So, we can actually use a drop down instead, instead of a text string field, which I did. Um, as this loads up again, I said this is a, a larger app with a lot of moving parts. And plus, I am also sharing my screen. So, for some reason, that tends to be a little slower on Chrome. Um, let's see. Let's just load it up now. Still not oh, there we go. So 
So Perfect. by changing it to a drop down, this would be a little bit easier. Um, so if you're, I mean, I'm the only one using this app. So I know that I need to have a capital Y or N if I'm typing yes or no. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are sharing this across your organization or a group of friends that are using this app, a drop down um, would definitely be probably your best case. So there's no you know, spelling mistakes or grammar or anything like that. So if I use this drop down, I can actually choose between yes or no right here instead of typing it out. Cool. So that would, be, that would be other. Sorry, Christoph is asking if you guys could build a prognostic game for internal use. Oh, you mean like, like weighing out who would win or not? I think that's what it means. I know I wanted to do, um, I had a couple ideas around doing uh, some internal predictor stuff. Had we had we have enough time, um, we probably would have built something. Uh, Christoph says yes, that's what he meant. Um, but I know, I think the Euro 2020 tournament started, the game started on like a Friday. And I believe this idea came to Joe and me and myself like the late Thursday afternoon. So we didn't have much time. That was my bad. Yeah, sorry. I was like, <laughs> ooh, we should do a Euro app, a Euro Cup. And they're like, it's not the Euro Cup. It's the Euro 2020. And I'm like, why is it 2020? It's, well, it's 2021. 2020. <laughs> it was delayed. And then we got into, okay, we'll build something. Yeah. <laughs> Cody's like, oh, I, th I think I told you on a Saturday. And I expected we worked on it on a Monday. And you're like, yeah. hey, it's done. Hey, it's done. This is working. Yes. So had we have enough had had we have enough time to build something, um, would have loved to do like an internal, you know, predictor or voting or something like that where you can see everyone's predictions, um, some type of a leaderboard internally that I think would have been pretty cool. Um, but yes, so this is our Maybe Euro for the World Cup we could do that. Go. I'm not sure is I'm not sure when the World Cup is. I'll ask the audience. Christoph, do you know when the World Cup is? It might be next year. It's for it's every other year, right? It's every other year. It's not like the Olympics. Where oh it's no, no, year. I mean no. It's every four years. So they have like one Euro Cup, and then two years later, I think it's the World Cup. Okay. Fair so enough. Like, I think I think it's like this next year. Yeah. Next year. Right, thank you. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, but yes, so this is our our mat, our current match data. Um, Next, I am going to be going into our historical match data. So totally different uh, data set. Um, Jane, you and I went over this data set um, earlier in the week. Um, so let's get into um, you know building this. One of the things I really like um, about building dashboards, kind of my go-to thing is, um, is being able to tell a story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a firm believer, believer of, you know, the data doesn't lie unless you have dirty data, then it just lies all the time. But <laughs> assuming that it's very clean data, um, you know, data doesn't lie. You know, numbers don't lie. Um, I am a firm believer of the data can talk, the data can actually tell a story. Um, and how you build that dashboard controls how you tell that story. Um, so with our data today, I came up with a few questions that I would like answered. Um, then we can ask the audience, and Jane, you and I can go back and forth here on what we would want to see. But in the top left corner here, um, I just have a text object. If you can see on your screen, it's a little soccer field um, mm -hmm. in the background there. Um, so I want to know a few things. Um, what year had the most attendance? Um, what stages typically had the most attendance? Um, and then finally, who scores the more goals, home or away, in a given stage or year? Um, okay. So let's, Interesting. let's start with number one. Um, yeah. So I'm going to edit mode. Go ahead. I'd also love to know who has won the most games. Just who has won which the most country? Games? Which country? So let's add that. I think that will help me predict. Okay. We'll add that. I'm going to write that down. Um, all right. So first, let's get into... Oh, it's a soccer pitch. Interesting. <laughs> so for our audience, for those that are watching at home... Um, Let's get everyone accustomed real quick to the actual day itself. Um, so I'm just throwing in the table. So using our wizard here, we're gonna go and we're gonna go pull in all of our data here, okay. just so we get a sense of what the data, what data is all there. So it looks like we got the date of which the match occurred, the home team, away team, the number of goals the home and away team scored, the stage. Um, 
special wind condition. That one's cool. Um, so it looks like if, if anyone went into extra time or not, or how they scored. Um, stadium, city, attendance, and then the year of uh, the tournament. Ooh, wow. um, so that's what we're dealing with. So let's keep that in mind here and minimize that down here. Um, so first one, what year had the most attendance? So because it's time series, I'm thinking a line chart. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pull a line chart in here. Um, what year had the most attendance? So let's go ahead and throw year in here. I think it's called attendance. Yep. All right. So it's just gone way up. So it's gone way up. Um, <laughs> partly because I, I would like to think because I feel like modern stadiums probably hold just a little bit more people um, than that in the 60s and 70s. Um, also maybe popularity. Um, you know, more attention around the sport. Um, you know, media and stuff like that. That could be a reason for that jump. It does look like there was a big dip in 92, though. Yeah, I wonder what happened in 92. Yep, could be something to look into. Um, if any of our audience members know what happened in 92. Um, Jane, you and I weren't born yet in 92, but <laughs> maybe someone else knows. Um, anyway, so one of the things, Jane, I like about our line chart Um one of the things I always I always tell people, um, if you go to interactivity, one of the things I like to use is the context menu. Um, are you familiar with the context menu at all, Jane? No, please no. explain what it is. I will. Um, so the context menu, it you know, my my opinion, really lets the end user be their own developer, right? So if I'm in this chart here and I want to right click, um, I have a couple different options, right? So I can show values on the chart. Um, some people in my experience building dashboards, some people like to show values. Some people hate it. Some people mm -hmm. like it some of the times. So if I'm an end user who loves values and they're not on there, I'm going to be super upset and vice versa. Um, so the context menu actually allows you to hide and show them yourself. So really you can be your own developer. Um, if you don't like them, you can hide them. If you want them, you can show them. Um, so that's really cool. Um, something else too is we can add an area underneath our line chart as well. Um, so I know in some from a visual representation standpoint it does give it just a little little something, a little little dimension to it. Yeah, it makes it easier to read and see. A little bit, doesn't sometimes. it? Yeah. yeah. So I know, I mean, from a visual standpoint, obviously, um, you know, for more visually um, driven people like myself, I like looking at stuff rather than reading stuff. So for me, I would like probably a shaded um, graph rather than numbers. I mean, that's yeah. that's just me. Um, and finally, we can show trend lines. So this has a pretty obvious trend to it. Um, you know, so we can add that trend line. And of course, we can hide it too, just if we were curious. So we're going to go ahead and take some of this stuff off again. Clear Whoa, out. that's intense. Uh, oh, yeah. Viva said, 1992, the Soviet Union was breaking up and Yugoslavia was at war, but also qualified for the final stage. All right. Great. So the context menu is when you right click, you have yep. that three dots. Yep. That is the context menu. And you can add yes. it, delete it. Yep. Yep. So it really, it lets the end user kind of control their own narrative. Right. Uh, it really lets it hide and show um, what they want to see, uh, which is really cool. Um, but let's go ahead and start editing this a little bit more. So we always have to add the title, right? So yeah, something that makes sense. Yeah, I'll do number of people by year. Something pretty simple. Um, Jane, what's your favorite color? Oh, it's purple. Oh, it's already purple. Can we? Uh, pink? let's. We can make it pink. We can make, make it pink. Pink. After the Hillsborough disaster, after the stadiums started to become all cedar. Oh, did something happen? Where? People standing got, I don't know, crushed. It's like VizLib is not only a visualization extension company. We're also historians. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we got our pink. Let's make that. Let's make the symbols a little bit wider here. Is there a difference in the way that context menu is enabled for mobile and touch devices? I would not know that answer. 
if if Joe's still in the background there, Joe, do you know that? Yeah, that's right. I think uh, normally when you right click on your background, you have a touch screen computer, right, Cody? I do actually. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, so you're defaulted into touch mode, and yeah. so it creates those like dots around a circle. Gotcha. Uh, if you're on regular desktop, contacts menu is just one right click. Okay. So it's kind of like you're on a pseudo mobile device. My uh, my computer does the same thing. All right. Fair enough. Thank you, Joe. And then, Jane, let's throw an icon in here. Is there a, is, that'd be great if there was a soccer ball icon. Let's see. Oh, you can search below. Oh, there it is. I was typing in the wrong thing. Look at that. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. Awesome. All right. So under appearance, I, for some reason, I don't know why I always do this, but I always like to make um, everything a little darker, a little easier to read. Um, some more contrast. I yeah, a little bit. Um, given the white background, if we could choose a different background, which we can, um, I think it would look a little bit better. Um, so I always love putting my font and axis colors um, in black. Um, again, it just adds that contrast to it a little bit more. Um, okay, cool. So there is our line graph. And we know that in, what was it, 1992, the mm -hmm. Soviet Union was up to no good? It was also good. after the Hillsborough disaster. I don't know what that is, but maybe people were wary of going into tenants. Oh, oh my God. They said it was a big football match where 96 people died due to overcrowding. You have a very oh knowledgeable audience. Yeah, that's intense. But good. So let's let's do this. Let's add um, let's add a reference line in uh, ninety two, just so we know. Yeah. See if that works. Yep, there she is. So let's do that so people know that there was something going on there. Maybe this black. Um, what you could also do is getting some annotations in there. Ooh. Right? I think that would look cool. All right. So where do I go for that? Okay. So let's go to ed interactivity. Interactivity. Nope. I'm oh. I'm lying. It was yep. back where it was. Reference, Reference uh, objects, oh. annotations. Add annotations. And then so this is the part where don't actually click into it when you type. So for... For the value on x-axis, let's just do 1992. All right. And then for the measure value, let's click. Um, what? It, wait, how many is that? So Could you? Can you put your? Yes. Okay. So do that number. Uh, four hundred thirty thousand. Yes. Okay. Right. Great. Um, and then you can change up the title. So our title can be uh, disaster. You can also throw emojis in there if you want. Uh, you just gotta search up an emoji and then you can copy and paste it in. Soviet was doing stuff. That'd be very, ooh, it's behind there. Is there any way we can change that? Yeah, so you can bring it down. So since the balls are up ahead, oh. we can actually, we can bring it down. So if you keep scrolling, Oh, here we go. Keep going a little bit. Oh, okay, here right here. So annotation distance, you can change the distance, but if you also scroll down a little bit more, that's just gonna make it further away. You okay. can change the angle. So instead of it going up, you can change oh. it so it goes down below. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it will rotate it like a circle. Oh, very cool. So let's go, yeah, let's push it below. Oops, went too far. And then you can change the distance so it's not so far away. All right, so we can bring it in a little bit. Perfect, yeah. I like that. All right, cool, awesome. So we got our reference object. We have our description, we have annotation, we have our hot pink line, with our black axis. So these are the number of people by year. Um, so what year had the most attendance? Uh, looks like the previous year, 2016. Yeah. Um, to answer question number one. Um, what else we got? Next one. What stages typically had the most attendance? All right. When I think of that, 
let's throw in, I often don't use this a lot, but sometimes it works really well, is the, is the heat mat. Um, I'm not sure if okay. you use the heat map a lot. No, the heat map, I don't use too much. We did it once um, with the Friends app. We Okay, yep. That. All right, so for the measure, we know we want attendance. Um, so, Jane, for stages, right? So you have the group group stage, you got the quarterfinals, the semifinals, you got the final, right? So mm -hmm. if you had a guess, which stage do you think would probably be the most attended? So I the stage. Well, I don't know what stage. So stages, like, is it going to be the group stage, the semifinal, quarterfinals, the finals? Okay, I think the finals probably. That's. I mean, that's. I think that's what I would. That's what I would assume, too. So let's throw in stage, um, and we know attendance rose by a year. So let's let's throw in year. Or we can do city, so we can see which city. Because when you said stage, I was thinking like a performance stage, and I thought, oh, is that what they call fields? They call them stages. <laughs> All right, so let me blow this up to make a little bit more full screen. All right, so let's make this full screen here. So we have a lot of data here. Press done. Let me get an edit mode. We can analyze this just a little bit more here. So this is a pretty large heat map here. Um, just going on color alone, it looks like London. Group A. Group A. Um, what's that? What's that number? Two hundred thirty thousand. Um, it's interesting. I would have. I wouldn't have cruised. Where are the finals at? So the finals are down. Finals here. Um, and really, it's. Not too much attendance. You know what else could be too? I know the locations of the tournament switch between every year. Um, mm -hmm. So it might be the case that, you know, not a lot of finals are held in these certain cities. Um, right. You know, okay. Group, that makes sense. Group stages might hold a little bit more. Um, so let's do. Let's do year then. Let's do back to, all right. We'll do year. Let's go. So instead of city. Let's change this to year. I wonder how much are tickets to go this where is it being played this year? Oh no. <laughs> Europe. It's a good guess. <laughs> Unless it's England, then it's not Europe anymore. <laughs> All right. So let's look here. Um so it looks like and actually I'm gonna go back in the edit mode. I'm gonna sort by or measure here, so we get some better distribution. All right, now we're good. We actually just made, uh, someone just made a really good point. Um, if the last comment, Joe or Jay, I'm not sure who's controlling it. There's only one match in the final. That would make sense. Um, so the actual opportunity to attend the final from the amount of people is less than groups. So that would make sense. So more people can attend group stages because there's multiple games within that group where the final is just one game. So that actually makes sense. Um, so if you look in here, the round of 16 um, has the most attendance, it looks like. Um, and that Ooh. would make sense. because Maybe if you did average then instead of some. That's true. Let's try that. I wonder what group A, group D, all these groups are. So the groups are just, a, there's multiple teams. You know, there's a bunch of teams that play before you get into the round of 16 or like the bracket stage. Um, so group A oh. is just the teams that are in group A that play each other and then so on and so forth. Um, okay, like the qualifying round. Essentially, yeah. Um, all right, so average actually looked like um, it leveled our data a little bit more. So by this, it looks like the final, on average, has the most attendance. Um, Which makes sense. Followed by, it looks like maybe the semifinals. Mm -hmm. um, and then... 
looks like maybe the quarterfinals. Um, so that would make, that makes a lot more sense. Um, it looks like the least attended is the third place playoff, um, which probably also makes sense. I think more people would more or less want to attend the final than the third place playoff. Um, that's just me. Um, I guess that's my, my opinion, but this distribution definitely makes a lot more sense. And it looks like in 64, 96 in 2016, um, had the most attendance for the final. Um, so that's interesting. That's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. Um, okay. So we got our heat map. Um, so now I want to get into, um, the scores. So home and away scores, um, for this, I was actually thinking of, um, doing a, a scatter plot. Um, so I'm going to throw one of those in. I think I might be on a little bit of a lag here. I'm not sure if. It might be because you're running OBS as well. I know that one eats up a lot. Eats up a little bit. All right, fair yeah. enough. All right. Plus it's Thursday. Sometimes our laptops can sense it. Uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah it's, it seems like Monday, Thursday, Friday, my laptop is, is really slow because it's Monday, you know, first day after the weekend. Yeah. And obviously Thursday, you're getting ready for Friday. And Friday, my, my computer is already checked out. So yeah. Um, okay, so let's add our measures here. So the measures, we want away team goals um, and home team goals. Um, so away team, or we should probably do average. Oh, by country. So you want every dot to be a country? New country, we could do um, stages, we could do um, year. Um, basically, I mean, we can throw any, we can throw multiple dimensions in there. Cool, um, let's do, let's throw it around and see. So let's do average. Um, so earlier, I know we did stage down there, uh, we did year. Um, so up to you. Let's just, I mean, let's throw a year in there first just because we know it's clean. Um, and then we can start playing around. Um, okay. So we have our home team on the left. We have our away team on the bottom. Um, so it looks like a pretty cool even distribution. Um, and Jane, just forewarning, just because I am very extra um, and because this is a soccer app. Um, I'm not going to use our color dots. I'm actually going to throw in an image. Yes, and let's do it. Yeah, let's and do this. So I have an image already picked out. Perfect. Um, it's not Joe's face. It's going to be something else. Sorry, Joe. Um, I have a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make the opacity a little higher and the symbol size a little bit more. So there we go. So the cool thing is you can just get any link. You can just copy yes. the image link and then yep. you can just throw it in here. Yep. So all this awesome. is is the URL to the image. Um, it's a JPEG. And I threw that right in. So now we have our soccer balls as our markers. It's a soccer app. So why not have soccer balls as your data points? Why not? Yeah. Right. Um, you know, obviously, we can control the size. Um, so that's my scatter plot. Um, one of the things that I also like about it is we can also use clusters. Um, since I do have um, markers on there, the clusters won't actually color code. So let me go back here. And let's throw some color. Oops. Come on. All right, so you can see some clusters start to appear here. So this will actually automatically group our clusters um, to kind of, you know, throw out some outliners and where things are actually grouped in. So it looks like we have three nice clusters here. So our two big outliers, it looks like in 76 and 60, on average, had the most goals uh, per match for home and away. Averaged about, uh, what's this? two goals for the home team and two and a quarter goals for the away team. And it looked like in 68. Um, Tough game. 
yeah, those were probably some zero 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 one type of games. Um, you know, which I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends. If you're more of a, um, I like a bunch of goals scored type of person, or I like a great defensive struggle where I like it zero zero for a final going into overtime. You know, pick your poison. I'm more of an offensive player myself. I love when points are scored and American football, the score is, you know, 55 to 50 type of things. Um, so I like the action a little bit from the offensive side. Um, you know, and then it seems that most of the games on average are anywhere between, looks like I have to move my axis a little bit here because we have a bunch of ones here. So I have to move my decimal out a little bit. Um, but it looks like the majority of our games are within one and a half and you know, 0.7. So a lot of our games here for the, the Euro history um, is in those two clusters there. So pretty cool. Um, I really like the clustering effect, really when there's a bunch of data points. Yeah. Um, you can try country and then we yeah, can so see. Yeah, so let's, I'm gonna say, let's throw country in there because I think that's gonna have a lot more um, data points. Not country. What is our is it team? You know what? It might be. Let me check our table. But it might be the case where it's home team and the way team. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. So we won't be able to do that. Um, Let's do. I'm curious. It might still work, right? If you picked like home team, the the away team has goals that they score, so it's kind of like points for and points against. Would that still work? Let's try. It. Yeah, try your home team country there. It could be way off, but I'm. Let's wait for it. All right, so what's this show? Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia, okay. away team goal. So no, this I know. So this actually this this still makes sense. So each dot is individual country. And throughout the group stage, round of sixteen and so on, they can either be the home team or be the away team. Or no. No, we chose home team. So this is just, just be home team. team. We can so try doing away team and see if the same results come up. Yeah, let's do that. It'd just be like flipping it. That's my guess. It's like a triangle kind of pointing out that way. Wild guess. No. 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 I don't know what's going on. I'm switching back to my soccer balls. I'm sorry. I like those. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Joe's out. All right. Um, yeah. So that's interesting. Um, let's try. Uh, what's what's another one we have? We have uh, we have city. So maybe there's a there's a certain city where people tend to score more goals. Yeah, so somewhere over here. So what's that? Belgrade. Okay. Belgrade on average has the most scores. The most scores on average. Not some low ones, Florence. Interesting. I wonder what's happening with all those ones. Well, that's the thing. It's another thing with kind of um, with soccer data. Um, you don't often see, you know, 10 nothing, or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. When you think of, you know, American football, you have seven, 14, everything's by sevens. So you, I think you get a, a wider distribution of, of points where in soccer, you know, the average score, if you look in here is one, 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 to two, two, one, zero, zero. Um, so maybe instead of average, we do sum. So this will go total. And I'll see if this changes anything. All right, so that's a little bit better distribution. So I'm sure, all right, so now that's Belgrade's good. no longer up there. Um, so let's change this back to, let's change this back to year. Actually, no, let's do, uh, let's do stage. Okay, so this is a pretty, pretty clean 
distribution. So it looks like on average, the group stages and actually mm-hmm. the semifinals um, actually have the most goals scored. Um, finals kind of right in the middle. Um, Interesting. Which honestly, I think I would I would guess that. I think I would guess that the group stages are going to be have more goals scored only because you know you're not you know the stress of you know losing yeah. the final isn't there you're not going to take as many chances in the final in the group stage you might be you know still running around like a crazy person trying to <laughs> you know um you know just take a bunch of chances and see what happens in the group stage um or i don't think you'd see a lot of chances taken in, in the final um so that's interesting um I don't think it really surprised me that the third place playoff um, is a little low. Um, what we got in here? So, I mean, I think oh, that makes it. Sum. Yes. But if it's the sum. Yeah. Oh, ah, okay. Sense. There's more matches. So it makes sense that there'd be more points scored. Okay. That makes sense too. Huh. Oh yeah, that because there's more games being played it shows how much we know about soccer. There yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's the story we're telling at both this dashboard is that Jane and Cody need to do more research on soccer. Yeah, um, we don't know anything. About there you soccer. go. Well, good. Now, so that's that's the three questions I had. That's all I want to answer. Um, what else? Any questions from audience, Jane? What What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What else can we throw uh, on this dashboard to, to kind of tell tell a story here? What else do we want to know? Here's our uh, let me pull up our table. Get another look at the data available to us. I'm still interested in seeing kind of which team has scored the most. Which team has scored the most? Yeah, which country has scored the most points overall? Okay. So it stinks that it's split up in home or away. Um, but what we can do is we can we can split it up into into two graphs. We can do yeah. home team and home goals, and then away team and away goals. If we do something like that. Okay, um, that sounds good. So let's do that. I am going to make this small. Um, so, Jane, what do you think? What kind of graph are we thinking to show? Um, let's do a bar chart. Something bar chart? Simple. All right. Let's throw a bar chart in there. And I'm going to delete my uh, text object here. Because we answered those questions and because I need a little bit more real estate. All right. Um, so let's do home home team first. Um, okay. Home team name. And let's go ahead and some home team goals. All right. So right off the back, it looks like France is there. Um, let's just go and recall this goals let's change our number formatting to no decimals because you can't score half a goal (laughs) um all right so for this when i when i look at top score shoots lower scores um for some reason i always read it better um when my axis is actually vertical more than uh or sorry horizontal instead of vertical um so i'm actually gonna throw it like that i think it might tell a little bit better of a story there um all right what else um all right jane again what's your second favorite color or third favorite color besides purple or pink uh let's do orange orange are we like a light orange or we like a d i know you're you're big on pulp but i know what what, what are we thinking here for an orange are we let's thinking do like just, a, a pretty mellow pretty mellow thinking more like a yeah something like that I think it's more mango at the moment. Mango's Close, good. Let's, Close yeah, enough. Let's all right, that. we're going mangoes. I'm not sure if mangoes have pulp or not. Um, all right, let's throw some values on there. Okay, perfect. 
Um, and because we're a little squished for space, um, let's just show, let's show top 10. Oh, do you want to make a container and then one can be home game scores, one can be you away read my, team scores? You read my mind. So let's Perfect. throw home, let's throw, let's go home team here. Um, and let's do master item, a home team. And then we can actually, I'm actually going to, instead of making a whole new bar chart, because we are pressed for time, I am going to unlink our home team. Mm -hmm. And then we're actually going to call them away team. Oops. And then we can change home. Away. And then some home team is now going to be some away team. And because we are fancy, we have to change the color of our bar. It can't be the same. So fourth era color. Uh, let's do green, like green. a deep forest green. Deep forest green. All right. Hold on. Yes, now darker. Uh, that's good. Nice and foresty. Oh, nice and foresty. Nice, healthy trees. <laughs> um, okay, perfect. So we got our top 10. Uh, we need to change that label. It's no longer, or no, it is a weight team. Uh, perfect. So let's go ahead and throw master in. This is going to be a weight team. And then just as quick as we created it, it is now gone. Um, so let's go find our VizLib container. <clears throat> there she is. One of the things I like about you know a lot of our products, especially the container, um, it gives us some templates. So we don't have to spend like 10, 15 minutes every time we're in there um, creating a template. So which one should we do? Um, ooh, I like, I like these down here. Tabs, yeah. Yeah, let's go contrast green. All right, so we, we already have our template in there. So let's throw in our container objects. Um, let's go home team. And let's go away team. So I also, Jane, I don't know about you, but one of the reasons I love the container is, you know, I, I've I've built dashboards now for a while and I have helped people build dashboards for a while. And there are times where you obviously in click, you can extend the sheet, extend the page. There'll be like 50 bar graphs, right? And you just keep scrolling down mm -hmm. the whole entire time. I love the container because like we did, it's the same type of data, right? It's just home or away. Um, and it takes up the same amount of space. You need one quadrant. You don't need two. Mm -hmm. um, and it's perfect. And if we had other bar graphs in there that show us the same thing, maybe total goals by country and stage and year, we could throw them in the container as well, um, which is cool. It's kind of a, a time saver and a space saver at the same time. Um, as most of the people know who develop and click, real estate is very precious. Um, you, know, you don't want to be scrolling down your page forever and ever. Um, to try to find the answer. So I love the container. It's one of the reasons I love it. Um, obviously, with the Vizlip container, we can customize it. Um, you know, pretty cool, um, which is very nice. Um, so this is what we got. We, we got four nice graphs on here. We got the number of people by year. We have our distribution of attendance by stage and year. Um, we have our distribution of home team and the weight team goals by stages. Um, and then we finally got total goals by home team and the weight team. So, Jane, to answer your question, it looks like for the home team, uh, France was our winner, total of four mm -hmm. or six goals. And for the weight team, it looks like Spain. Oh, interesting. Interesting Germany is not first on any of these That's lists. That's right. Top five, though. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, I'll take top five rather than bottom five. The other cool thing about this is it looks like the home team scores more goals. Um, if you look at Spain and Portugal, it's 28, 25. Um, and for the home team, it's 46 and 35. So that's interesting too. Um, definitely something, uh, interesting there. And I wonder why that would be it too, is home team has more than the away team on average. Um, very interesting. Um, so Maybe because they host it more in France, so there's more home. It's more like home field advantage? Yeah. Could I don't know. Home, home turf? It's not we important. should be ESPN commentaries, I think. We'd be very right? good at explaining that. We should be World Cup or yes. Euro Cup commentary. We, yes. We, we wouldn't know what the heck we're talking about, but it will sure be interesting. Yeah, it will definitely yes. be interesting. Someone um, has scored a goal. We don't know who. Whoever's in the red jersey, 
They yes. have scored a goal. That will go, just be yes. Go you. <laughs> go red team. So Jane, that that is my Euro 2020 app. Yeah, we have our we had our scoreboard. Uh, we obviously have our historical data. Uh, I know we only have a few minutes left. Uh, appreciate you having me on the show. We work together on a daily basis, so I'll see you probably in two minutes after the show. But I appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's been great. Hopefully, everyone enjoyed the Euro 2020 app. Hopefully, everyone picked up on some some good stuff. Appreciate everyone calling in, questions and comments. We appreciate the comments because otherwise we're just babbling up here. Um, thank you for the insights on the 1992 disaster. Um, great thing. I had something I was reviewing the data set um, earlier today to kind of figure out what I wanted to put on the screen. Um, had no idea that that was a dip um, and because of that in the, in the line graph. So that was actually really cool. Um, definitely a cool use case. Um, you know, for the annotations and the, and the reference line we put in there. Um, so awesome. I love it. Love on the fly commentary. Um, yes. Cheers. Can't forget. Joe, he's back. Make cheers our stuff. Cheers everyone. Cheers. Nice happy hour. We'll, uh, uh, you know, Cody, what do you think about getting that app uh, updated, tweak a little bit more Then we can share it on the gallery. Yep, People perfect. can download it, take it apart, add stuff to it. I think yeah. we still have a few more to add, right? Yes. Um, so we'll keep adding, um, Every week, poor Graham's gonna have to keep writing about stuff and if someone John wants and Greta to make a posting bracket, it. Yes. Feel free. Well, uh, Christoph said something about a bracket. Christoph, I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Christoph, if we get this up and you want to make a bracket, right there, I'll share something with you. Perhaps we're gonna hold you to that. Yes. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Uh, nice stuff. Now we have a whole yeah, new app. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thanks, All guys. Right. Take care. See, See you guys. Soon. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.